in this section we are going to study about other drugs in choline esters so as we know acetylcholine is sensitive to both true and pseudocholine esterases because of which acetylcholine is very short acting drug and it does not have any systemic use because of this metabolism in order to overcome these problems uh, acetylcholine was subjected to beta methylation and, in, and a new drug was developed called as methacholine now methacholine it is the methylated form of acetylcholine Methacholine, uh, it is resistant to pseudocholine esterase, but uh, it is still sensitive to true choline esterase. So by this change, we were able to incorporate resistance to pseudocholine esterase in this drug, and as a result, its half life increased to some extent. Now, by other changes made in acetylcholine, two new drugs were designed. These were called as bethanicol, and the other one was called as carbacol. Now, these two drugs, they they are resistant to both true as well as pseudocholine esterases. So these drugs have uh, they are long acting drugs their half life is greater as compared to acetylcholine and methacholine. Now if you take a look at their half lives, uh, acetylcholine it has the shortest half life among all these drugs and the half life of methacholine is somewhat greater as compared to acetylcholine and carbacol and bethanicol they have long half life. So these are longer acting drugs as compared to acetylcholine drugs they are cholinergic agonists however uh, the effect of methacholine is more prominent on the myocardium so we can remember it by uh, the letter m myocardium so m2 receptors are stimulated more as compared to m1 and m3 receptors similarly bethanicol it has prominent action on bladder before bethanicol before bladder so m1 and m3 receptors they are stimulated more as compared to m2 receptors and ca in carbacol uh, m1 and m3 Three receptors they are stimulated more as compared to m2 receptors just like bethanicol so these were the muscarinic actions of these drugs and uh, if we talk about nicotinic actions this bethanicol it has zero nicotinic effects and the drug carbacol it has maximum nicotinic effects and uh, methacholine it has moderate nicotinic effects now, whenever we want to use a drug for muscarinic action we do not want it to produce nicotinic effects because that will result in side effects so carbacol it has maximum nicotinic side effects and which is the reason it does not have any systemic use it it can be used in uh, by a topical route it can be used in ocular surgery by directly putting some drops on pupil and uh, it acts as a meiotic agent Methanicol, since its prominent action is on bladder, so it can be used in conditions in which we want to stimulate these receptors and make the bladder contract. So these uh, these are used in case of atonic bladder or in case of neurogenic bladder when the bladder does not contract by itself. Methacholine, uh, it has moderate nicotinic side effects, so its use is also limited. It can be used uh, in case of tachycardia because its prominent action is on the myocardium through M2 receptors. So it will mainly stimulate M2 receptors in the myocardium. Therefore, it is used in tachycardia. It will decrease the heart rate. It can also be used since it has short half-life. Therefore, it can be used in diagnosis of bronchial asthma. This is called as methacholine challenge test or bronchial challenge test. Now we'll move to another class of uh, directly acting cholinergic drugs, alkaloids. Uh, now this class includes drugs such as pilocarpine, muscarine, and sevimeline. Sevimeline is recently approved drug for the treatment of xerostomia and the, uh, the prototype drug of this class is pilocarpine so we'll discuss it in detail. So uh, the prominent action of pilocarpine is on the pupil so P for pilocarpine and P for pupil. However other than pupil it also so it acts on pupil and other than pupil it also produces action on cardiovascular system and on uh, various glands of body. Now before moving to uh, the actions, um, this pilocarpine is it's obtained from a natural source from plant called Pilocarpus microphyllus. So it's a natural alkaloid derived from Pilocarpus microphyllus. And its uh, muscarinic actions are more prominent as compared to nicotinic actions. It means it will produce ganglionic effects only at uh, high doses. Now coming to actions of pilocarpine on, on pupil the drug pilocarpine it stimulates m3 receptors present on circular muscles of iris which results in meiosis that is contraction of pupil and other than the, uh, the this as a result of meiosis there is decrease in intraocular pressure in the eye and it also causes uh, uh, stimulation of m3 receptors present in the ciliary muscle so it results in contraction of ciliary muscles or muscles of accommodation which results in accommodation spasm so this accommodation spasm uh, it occurs as a side effect to uh, pilocarpine. 
Now coming to effects on cardiovascular system, the effects are complex effects as it produces different effects at low or normal doses and the effects are different at high doses. So at low or normal doses, the effects will be produced because of stimulation of muscarinic receptors. So it will stimulate M2 receptors present in heart as well as M3 receptors present in blood vessels. Stimulation of M2 receptors will cause decrease in blood pressure and heart rate and stimulation of M3 receptors causes vasodilation which also causes decrease in blood pressure. At high doses, the ganglionic stimulation will be prominent as uh, ganglionic stimulation occurs at high doses and in ganglionic stimulation sympathetic stimulation predominates so the net result is increase in blood pressure. Now the effect on glands, uh, uh, pilocarbene stimulates M3 receptors present in various glands and it will cause increase in the secretion such as increase in salivation and increase in lacrimation. Now let's move to uses of pilocarpine. Since pilocarpine uh, acts as a meiotic agent and as a result of meiosis it decreases intraocular pressure therefore it's quite useful in closed angle glaucoma because due to meiosis it increases the trabecular outflow of aqueous humor as a result it is useful in closed angle glaucoma. It can also be used to prevent uh, the formation of adhesions in case of uveitis or in case of corneal ulcers. Now, in uveitis or corneal ulcer, adhesion is formed uh, only when the, the muscles of pupil remain static, when they do not contract or relax. So, in this case, we use a meiotic and a midriatic alternatively. So, the pupil will, will contract and then relax. So, it will uh, continuously keep contracting and relaxing and this will prevent the formation of adhesion. Since uh, pilocarpine acts on glands and increases salivation and lacrimation, therefore it's quite useful in xerostomia. It can be used in xerostomia as it increases salivation and lacrimation. Now let's move to side effects of pilocarpine. As uh, pilocarpine acts on eye and it causes contraction of ciliary muscle, so accommodation spasm is caused as a side effect of this drug. Uh, other than this, when, whenever this drug is used as a meiotic, it produces stinging sensation in the eye and uh, it also produces brow pain so these are common side effects which are associated with pilo now let us discuss another drug called as sevimeline sevimeline is a newly uh, developed alkaloid drug and uh, it's fda approved for the treatment of um, xerostomia it stimulates only m3 receptors and it's the drug of choice in case of xerostomia in xerostomia there is decrease in secretion such as salivary secretion and lacrimal secretion it can be a component of autoimmune disorder such as Jogren's syndrome so uh, in these cases we prefer saving